So as a player for Brown, then as a coach for Brown, Virginia calls. What was your reaction? I had the opportunity to look at the Penn State job in 2010 and really wrestle with the emotions of leaving Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2010, I wasn't ready. I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. And uh, um, that really helped me prepare me for the next big opportunity. What was your impression from the outside of the Virginia job? This is an institution that is committed to winning. And, uh, and you don't know what it is to win. You can't go this way. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a one way. <laughs> yeah. The arrow's forcing, pointing to you. Well, Lars is supposed, think, Lars is supposed to be telling this me where is to the go. Syracuse ground. Oh, right now, we're back, now we're back to a two way. Look at this. I knew what he's doing. So you look at this campus, you look at the history of the lacrosse program here, the location, the academics, but why does your style, lacrosse-wise, as a coach fit for this place? Because we're gonna put you in charge on the lacrosse field. We're gonna, we're not gonna puppeteer and hold you back and say, well, you have to do this, and you have to run this, and we're gonna stall for two minutes, catch our breath, set, throw the ball around three times and attack in a specific way. We need decision makers and leaders on the field University of Virginia creates difference makers and leaders off the field as well. So there's a there's a compatibility between the missions of both the university and what we're doing Growing up in central New York, what sort of influence did Native American culture and the Native Americans and their relationship with the cross have on your philosophy? Yeah, yeah, directly, immediate, and wholeheartedly. And, uh, grow up in uh, Lafayette, New York, and, and there's only one way to play the game. The game of lacrosse is, for the Native Americans has always been a preparation for life. Made no bones about it that you're going to recruit kids who have verbal commits elsewhere and you're going to go after kids later. Why do you think that system and process will work? Lacrosse savviness is so critical with our system. I can't, I can't discover that with an 8th or ninth yeah. grade man. I need, I need to wait till 10th, 11th, 12th grade to yeah. really see that maturation and that growth. So, so it's the physical maturation is certainly a big part of it, and, but a lot of it is that emotional and that academic slash lacrosse intelligence development. Just now we give those families another option. You can stick with your commitment. You can. That's fine. And if you're word-to-word, word, I get that. And you can say, but I'm just giving you another option. I'm going to play rapid fire with you. You've been around a long time as a player and a coach. If you could pick one lacrosse player, who is it? Andrew Towers. AT, he's loving this. Your style of coaching, what's the most important position on the field? Goalie. If you could spend one day away from lacrosse, where is it? Zion National Park. If you weren't a lacrosse coach, what do you think your profession might be? Veterinary. I know you're a huge college football fan. Oh yeah. Would you rather watch a fourth and one stop on defense or a 50 yard explosive play on offense? Fourth and one stop on defense. What's the best book you ever read, Lars? Woo! You have one? Oh, boy, I love, I love my books. Uh, I'll tell you, the book I probably quote uh, most often is um, Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Great book. You boys ready to eat? Yeah. Uh, Lars, you have any pull here? I don't. We're at the diner with Coach Tiffany, so we figured you know, we, we, should, we should commemorate. You know, we, we, we should commemorate this occasion. So breakfast at Tiffany's. The, the little blue box. Yeah, that's, everyone's always hoping to get received. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is wonderful. Sterling silver. Vintage Cavalier diner. Vintage Cavalier. Sterling silver. When did you become a vegetarian? Vegetarian. 1991. I moved out to 1991. Wow. No, I'm over 25 years now. I grew up in a bison ranch. Tiffany Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, Which is about the polar opposite. I just felt my job was to take care of the buffalo, to bailing the hay. Hi. How are you? Good. Slaughtered yeah. and yeah. It just never felt like this. Can I get y'all something How am I going to eat breakfast with you vegetarian? <laughs> you're totally you guys, are you going to give me dirty looks? Oh, you're totally. You're, 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 oh, breakfast is easy to be vegetarian. 
me right now, this Virginia program, this is Leviathan, but we haven't seen it rise above the surface of the water. You can just see the scales. It's only a matter of time before the full sea monster rises. You have Charlottesville. You have a fun system that kids want to play in. You have great facilities. You have history. You have tradition. And you got a coach who's brought a lot of energy and a lot of vigor into this program. And he's not afraid to break some taboos in recruiting. To me, Virginia, maybe next year, maybe in a couple of years, but it's a matter of time. This is a sleeping giant in the ACC. College across the world has changed. There's, there's a lot more uh, programs developing, committing to being great in college across. And so we got a bigger challenge than ever before, but that is our objective, to continually hunting, uh, to be relevant in the national championship scene, and to be a Final Four program every two or three out of four years. And, and, uh, and we're not gonna stop until that's, that's a reality.